Hi there. <laughs> Welcome to this week's reading vlog. I'm Amy and this is the Opinionated Woman. I am just about to step out of the house, but I thought I'd better just start off this vlog because I'm going to fetch something exciting from the Take Light Warehouse. So let me go do that. I'm going to listen to the last part of the Empress of Salt and Fortune on the way there. Um, hopefully I'll have it finished by the time I get back and then I'll show you my new thing. But uh, the Empress of Salt and Fortune, let me just close the Empress of and Fortune is <laughs> the thing that I, the problem that I have with short stories is that I very rarely manage to get like the fantasy world built up and up in my head. And I know it's like a personal thing. It's definitely the way I process things better, but I don't know what the fuck's going on in the story. <laughs> I've got absolutely no clue what's going on. It's very lyrically written, like a lot of really beautiful imagery. Do I know what's cracking? No. <laughs> And I feel like I might be a little bit dumb, but no, I'm not dumb. It's just the way I process stuff. Um, I didn't quite understand it. I don't know if maybe if I read it physically, I might get along with it better because I have found reading short stories physically and like little novellas physically has worked better for me. So maybe, maybe if I read it physically, it would be better, but I don't have the physical copy. So yeah, I'll hopefully finish that one and then I'll start a book that I will understand a little bit better. I'm not saying this is a bad book in the slightest, like not in the slightest. If you're interested in them, go and check out Kayla from Books and Lala talking about them because she is a big fan and she loves it and she loves weird shit. Um, sometimes our weird shit uh, coincides, sometimes not so much. So yeah, go and check her out if you're interested in these books. Let's go get a, a new parcel. Okay, this is testing. Testing, testing. I can go all the way over here. Oh. Wait. Can you hear me still? Hmm? Look at this thing I've got. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm mic'd up, baby. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is so much fun. So I have a lapel mic. I need to figure out where to put it on my clothing so it doesn't look so weird sitting right there. But like, I suppose I don't need to put the little little thing on it. But yeah my audio is gonna get so much better because i have a freaking lapel mic and i love i love the freedom this is great it's got like a six meter long cable so you can film proper sit down videos and put the camera anywhere and it doesn't even matter oh this is so exciting so this is what i was fetching hopefully this audio sounds great <laughs> but yay moving up in the world Alrighty, I finished Embers of Salt and Fortune. I have no clue what happened. <laughs> no more to update. We're just going to leave it there. <laughs> so the next audiobook that I'm listening to is um, Gay's, Gay... Jay's Gay Agenda <laughs> by Jason June. Um, this popped up and looked super cute and it caught my eye because I have a sibling called Jay and they definitely have a gay agenda. Um, uh, so I thought that was funny and then I started following the author on Instagram and they describe themselves as a gender fluid mermaid and that is all I need to know. So yeah, I'm just going to start listening to that completely blind. I think it's a male male romance as far as I know, but yeah, we shall see. Um, the way it was described on script uh, really caught my eye. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to try it out. Um, do I have anything else interesting to talk about? No. <laughs>
Okay, so I am listening to Jay's J. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to say that. Jay's Gay Agenda. Um, it's reading quite young. Like, I like YA, but if it reads a little bit too young and melodramatic, then it's not really my thing. And it's like reading pretty damn simplistic. Like, it keeps on talking about people's relationship milestones and how he's like literally the only gay boy and like anywhere but I mean it might be true I don't know America but yeah I'm not enjoying it that much so far we'll see oh look at this lighting <laughs> wowzers trousers um I just wanted to say that this book is really annoying me <laughs> I think I'm going to scroll for something else because like they literally move from the country into the city and um, he talks about how he can, he like, as soon as they drive into the city, there's rainbow flags everywhere and love is love bumper stickers and guys making out in the park. I'm sorry, that's not true. That's so not true. <laughs> I, I'm, I live in Cape Town. It's like one of the gayest cities in the world and that's not true. <laughs> it's a little bit over the top, dear. So I don't think this book is for me. I think this book is more suited to YA. I mean, it's not an insult if you enjoyed this, just for my personal taste, I think I'm going to hop on something else. That made, it, made up my mind pretty damn easily. Um, one Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, which I actually just mentioned in my uh, Media Book Freak Out tag, which is going up after this, but it's fine. Um, I am going to pick up One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, uh, and it's because it just popped up on script. So, yay, I've been wanting to get this for so long. Hello there, my darlings. Uh, I just did a whole clip and realized that I wasn't recording. Yeah, I'm still recording. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, anyway, it's Sunday. Last night, I think uh, I caught up with you when I was saying that I was DNFing uh, Jay's Gay Agenda. I just think it's not my style and like it reads a little bit young for me. I'm not saying that older people can't enjoy this book at all. It's just me personally. It's just a personal thing. Um, it was very simplistic very uh, melodramatic and I think I do really struggle when like that proper angsty teen melodrama is there which is a realistic thing I know I was an angsty melodramatic shit <laughs> when I was a teenager um it just wasn't really working for me reading wise so I started reading One Last Up by Casey McQuiston already I'm loving being back in her writing style this time it's a sapphic romance so it's even better for me obviously <laughs> um so today it is I'm going to try and chill this Sunday. I'm going to try. We'll, we will see. i um, wear my naked lady shirt. That's cool. Um, the vlog went up this morning. So um, hopefully that one yeah, it went off of that edge. So that's cool. Um, and we might build a puzzle today. And I might get to talk to my girlfriend on Discord. We will see. So I've been reading uh, The Pink Line. I've been reading an, art uh, an article. A um, story about a couple that are living in Israel. One is Palestinian, one is Israeli. Um, and about th that conflict from that angle, because like, I'm still trying to find out, like trying to learn about what's happening between Palestine and Israel, because it's such a complicated issue. But um, yeah, I'm starting to learn a little bit more about it and learning about it from a queer perspective um, and how different things are done in uh, both countries is very, very interesting. And... The sort of underhandedness of Netanyahu's um, policies and stuff like that, like his motivations behind some of his policies, that man is a douche knuckle. <laughs> that, is, that is my political view right now. Benjamin Netanyahu is a douche knuckle. <laughs> Great commentary, Amy. Great. <laughs> anyway, I might also read out in the sun later, but I will, uh, I will catch you up when, when I do such things. I'm not very far into one last stop. Um, I was just reading Middlesex in the garden until it got too fucking cold. <laughs> it's really, it's really nippy, um, even though the sun is out. But um, one thing that I've already noticed in one last stop is that it has the same, um, same sort of, like, obviously it's the same writing style, but in red, white, and royal blue, you would like, 
I would keep on like finding excuses to listen to it and like keep on like I'd even just like sit down in my room where I you know should be taking my headphones out and just sit there listening um so she she really grabs you and she makes you want to carry on reading and I really really enjoy it and her characters are so real and so likable and so rounded so quickly and yeah I really like her she's like a super great young author super excited for everything else she has to write mm. Oh my goodness gracious. Another Monday, another me trying to find, trying to do, trying to do errands that are just not, just not working out for me in the slightest. I've come into the city today, as you can see. The city is a little bit more picturesque usually. A little bit further up the street, this is Long Street. Um, very famous Cape Town Street. Oh. But I failed, once again, in the same Oh, I just walked far in the rain <laughs> in the same task that I've been trying to get done for the last two, three weeks. But it's fine. Time to go home and be warm. I also just wanted to say that I'm listening to One Last Stop and I 100% thought this was just a contemporary, um, like similar to Red, Rotten, Ra Red, White and Royal Blue. That's the name is hard to say. Um, but it's not. Something has just come up in the story that has made it a little bit more... I don't want to spoil anything, and also I don't know yet, but it feels a little bit more magical realism-y, which is very interesting. I am on board for some queer, pretty lady magical realism. <laughs> but we'll see. I'll keep you updated, but I don't want to spoil it because this is obviously a book that people are hyping up a lot. And um, if it's worth reading, obviously I don't want to spoil it. Anyway, home time. Um, I don't have anything to update you on uh, one last stop just the magical realism element has really like come into its own now and I'm enjoying it so much it was like I'm so glad I didn't find out too much about this book beforehand so that I didn't know this was happening coming into it because I'm not going to tell you what the element is at all because I think it's definitely a book that I want to read and uh, it's an element that is a hell of a lot of fun um I've also been carrying on reading Middlesex. Uh, I'm really enjoying the story apart from the incest. So this has two, two elements of incest in it. And if I'd find, if I'd found out that there was incest in this book beforehand, I wouldn't have read it. It's one of those uh, elements in a book that I will not read from. Incest and... Um, the P word, um, I can't say that on YouTube, but, um, yeah, I, I find it very off-putting, so I try and, like, ignore it. I'm really enjoying the story anyway, like, as it is, we're definitely just coming up to our protagonist's sort of birth and everything I get before we were looking at her grandparents, um, and then looking at them having children, and then her parents, her, they, his, they're assigned female at birth, <laughs> let's put it that way, I'm not sure how it carries on later, I think they start living as a man later, but um, obviously they're intersex, so um, yeah, I, like, they don't actually blame the incest on, uh, they don't blame the intersex 
gene on the incest because both of the grandparents who were brother and sister had the gene and then passed it down to um, their son and that's that's where it uh, <clears throat> made itself known um, when the son had kids. Um, so it isn't strictly inbreeding that made um, the gene happen but I just don't understand why that aspect needed to be brought into this. I'm very confused by it. But, I mean, I am enjoying reading it besides that. It's just like every now and again it takes me out of it. I'm like, ugh, ugh, yeah. <laughs> Interactions between August and Jane in this in the one last stop are just so friggin' cute. They're such goals. Oh my goodness. I think this, <laughs> there's also a very big difference in uh, me listening to this when I am in a relationship and in love um, compared to when I was a sad romantic I <laughs> really desperately wanted uh, that kind of connection with someone I'd be like pining and now I'm like mmm it's so nice <laughs> but they just used this term uh, oh she said that that Jane sort of towed the line between beautiful and handsome and it would just be like a subtle change and I that is something that I love in a woman that is something that I find attractive in a, a, a woman or a non-binary person that sort of like my siblings is it's because I like gender fuckery but I do I love that that towing that line between being beautiful and pretty and being handsome oh man it's a it's just it just hits different it hits different um I also I said to you I said to you um I think I said to my girlfriend recently I was like if I was attracted to men if I was still into men or thought I was still into men I would definitely now that I've sort of sorted out the issues that uh, I had dating the men that I've I had dated in the past um, that I would so be into femboys like boys in dresses heck yeah heck yeah <laughs> if I was attracted to men which I am not but anyway just makes me think of it I really love this book I just thought I'm just listening to a part of uh... One last stop, also cleaning the counters. Um, and the friendship group that she has, that uh, she lives with, like her roommates and stuff, it's a, got a very new girl vibe. Like they've got this weird game called Roly Bangs that they play <laughs> in their dodgy ass apartment. And it's just so, uh, it's so much fun. And they've got like a drag queen friend that lives across the, across the, the hall from them. and. It's a fun old time. So if you like the new girl friendship group, you'll probably like this one. Okay, this is my evening. Got my journal. Got my football. My dad is a, a pom. He is a, um, I nearly said a scouser. <laughs> he's not a scouser, he's a cockney. Um, so we support Chelsea and I support England. So we'll see, they're playing Germany. Germany are really good. <laughs> so many of Chelsea's good players are in uh, the German squad, which is nerve-wracking. But anyway, yeah, we'll see. Not that you people watching for book things care about the football things, but whatever. This is my life. <laughs> I'm back in the city again to try and do this uh, task that I've been trying to do for the longest time. I'm about to stand in a motherfucker of a queue. So luckily I have my headphones and one last stop. And I'm going to read it while I stand in the queue. <laughs> Wish me luck. I'm coming here to my, my beautiful collage wall to finish off the final vlog of Pride Month. Uh, it is the 31st today. I did a lot of listening to uh, One Last Stop in the queue today, even though the, the queue is not successful and I didn't finish the book. <laughs> uh, I didn't think I would. Um, I'm still trucking through the pink line and through Middlesex. I'm not going to finish them by the end of Pride, but that's totally fine with me. I'm just going to carry on reading them and then you'll see what I thought about them in my wrap-up, I suppose, for uh, July. Um, 
So thank you for coming along with me on this uh, pride reading journey. I've really had a lot of fun. I've read some amazing books. I've read some books that were like, they're, they're up there. They are up there in my favorites of the year um, already. And like, I definitely want to make this a habit. So I super duper want to do this next month. So if you enjoyed this vlog and all of my other pride content, let me know by giving me a like, maybe even a subscribe down below and tickle in my bell for notifications. Uh, my coffee account will also be linked down there, my little virtual tip jar. Any support is uh, much appreciated. And until then, I'll check you next time.